Life in our small town was never meant to be a whirlwind of excitement, but it was ours, peaceful and predictable. That was until the day Jack shattered everything with a confession that turned my world upside down. I've got debts, Emma, Jack said, his voice quivering as he avoided my gaze. Big ones, from gambling. I remember feeling like the floor had fallen away beneath me. Debts? How? How much are we talking about? The numbers he muttered were astronomical, far beyond our means. Panic surged through me, but I tried to keep a level head. We can figure this out. Maybe a loan or a payment plan? Jack shook his head, his next words chilling me to the bone. There's another way. You could dance. At the club in the city. They pay well, especially for new faces. I felt sick. Dance for strangers? Jack, you can't be serious. He was desperate. It's the fastest way to clear everything. I lay awake that night, the weight of Jack's words pressing down on me. Dancing for strangers was unthinkable, but the desperation in his voice haunted me. I knew then that I had to take control of my own destiny. The next morning, I began my secret mission. While Jack was out, I started to hide money little bits here and there from our grocery funds, anything I could spare. I also began to research. The local library became my haven, a place where I could plan without fear of being overheard. One afternoon, as I was poring over a book about financial independence, Sarah, my neighbor, approached me. You've been spending a lot of time here lately. Everything okay? I hesitated, but something in her kind eyes encouraged me to confide in her. I'm in a bit of a situation at home. I need to find a way out. Sarah listened as I poured out everything. Jack's debts, his absurd solution, my fears. She offered me a sympathetic ear, and more importantly, her support. You're not alone in this, Emma. I'm here for you. As days turned into weeks, my plan began to take shape. I learned about secret bank accounts and legal rights. Sarah even introduced me to a friend of hers, a lawyer, who gave me some free advice. But just when I thought I had a grasp on things, I stumbled upon a darker truth. One evening, as I was searching for some paperwork, I found a hidden drawer in Jack's desk. Inside, there were documents that hinted at more than just gambling debts. Jack was involved in something illegal. My heart raced as I pieced together the clues. Fake company names, shady contacts. I was living with a stranger. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. This was more serious than I ever imagined. I knew then that I couldn't just escape. I needed to protect myself legally. The lawyer's advice echoed in my mind. Document everything. And that's exactly what I started to do. Every conversation with Jack, every suspicious document I found, I recorded it all. I was building my case, preparing for the day I would finally break free. And through it all, I kept up the charade with Jack. I pretended to consider his proposal, to keep him off my trail. It was the hardest role I ever had to play, smiling and nodding while my heart screamed in protest. But I did it for my future, for the light at the end of this dark tunnel. I was no longer the same woman who had been blindsided by her husband's confession. I was Emma, a woman on a mission, a woman with a plan. And as I lay in bed each night, I thought about what Sarah had said. I wasn't alone. I had an ally, a friend. And with that thought, I held on to a glimmer of hope, a promise of a new beginning. The days blurred into weeks, each passing moment a stifling reminder of the life Jack was trying to force upon me. His insistence on my dancing grew with every debt reminder that came in the mail. You've got to do this, Emma, Jack pressed one evening, his desperation palpable. I've spoken to the club owner. He's expecting you next week. I nodded, feigning agreement while my mind raced. Okay, Jack, I'll do it. But every word felt like a betrayal to my soul. That night, as Jack slept, I lay awake, my mind churning with plans of escape. I had been squirreling away money, little by little, but it wasn't enough. Not yet. The next morning, I met Sarah at our usual spot in the park. Her presence was a balm to my frayed nerves. I can't do it, Sarah. Dance for those strangers. I just can't. My voice broke, revealing the fear I'd been trying to mask. Sarah reached for my hand. You won't have to, Emma. We'll figure this out together. She became my confidant, my ally in a battle I never chose. Together, we brainstormed ideas, from selling some of my jewelry to finding odd jobs I could do without Jack knowing. But then, everything changed. One day, while Jack was out, I stumbled upon a hidden compartment in his desk. 
My hands trembled as I pulled out a stack of papers, each one a revelation of Jack's deeper deceptions. Fake business names, shady deals, even hints of money laundering. I was living with a criminal. Emma, what are you going to do? Sarah asked, her eyes wide as I showed her the documents. I have to document everything. If I'm leaving, I need to protect myself legally. From then on, every conversation with Jack, every shady phone call I overheard, I recorded it. My phone became my lifeline, a repository of evidence. Jack, oblivious to my growing defiance, continued his charade of a concerned husband. I know this is hard for you, Emma, but once this is over, we'll be free of debts. We can start fresh. His words stung, a bitter reminder of the man I thought I knew. I understand, Jack. I'll be ready for next week. But I wouldn't be at that club. I was planning something entirely different. Each day I grew bolder, my plans more concrete. Sarah and I met in secret, piecing together my escape. She even found a small apartment I could rent under her name. You're almost there, Emma. Just a little longer, Sarah encouraged me. My heart ached with gratitude for her. In this storm, she was my anchor. The day before I was supposed to dance, I made my move. While Jack was at work, I packed a small bag with essentials, the money I had saved, and the evidence I had gathered against him. I left a note on the kitchen table, my hands shaking as I wrote the final words of my old life. Jack, I cannot and will not be the person you want me to be. I'm leaving. Do not try to find me. With that, I stepped out of the house, the door closing behind me with a finality that echoed in my heart. Ahead of me lay uncertainty, but also freedom. As I walked towards the bus station, Sarah's words echoed in my mind. You're not alone. And in that moment, I believed it. I was Emma, no longer a victim, but a woman with a plan and a future of her own making. As I settled into my new, albeit temporary, sanctuary at Sarah's apartment, the gravity of my situation hit me. I was free from Jack's immediate grasp, but not from the danger he posed. I needed to act fast. Emma, you're safe here. Sarah reassured me over coffee one morning. But we need more than just your word against his. Evidence is key. I nodded, the weight of her words sinking in. I've been documenting everything. His illegal activities. I just need a bit more. The next few days were a blur of activity. I'd sneak back to the house when Jack was at work, gathering more documents, recording phone conversations, anything that could prove his criminal dealings. It felt like I was living a double life. One foot in the past and the other stepping toward freedom. But with each piece of evidence, my resolve strengthened. We're getting closer, Emma. This is solid stuff, Sarah said, pouring over the documents one evening. The reality of what I was doing hit me then. I was building a case against the man I once loved. Is this really right, Sarah? Am I doing the right thing? Sarah looked at me, her eyes firm. He put you in danger, Emma. You're just protecting yourself. Her words were a balm to my troubled conscience. Yes, I was protecting myself. And maybe, in a way, I was protecting Jack, too, from sinking further into his criminal abyss. As the evidence piled up, so did my courage. I started making plans for the future. A new identity. A new life. Far away from here. I know someone who can help you with a new identity, Sarah said one day. It's going to be okay, Emma. You'll start over. Her assurance was a beacon of hope in the storm. But as the day of my final departure approached, a sense of unease settled over me. I couldn't shake the feeling that Jack might suspect something. One afternoon, I made a final trip to the house to collect the last of the evidence. As I rummaged through Jack's desk, I heard the front door open. My heart stopped. It was Jack, home early. Emma? What are you doing here? His voice was a mix of surprise and suspicion. I turned, forcing a calm I didn't feel. Just grabbing some of my things, Jack. I... I needed closure. Jack eyed me, his gaze narrowing. Closure, huh? You seem very interested in my desk. I held his gaze, my heart pounding. Just memories, Jack. That's all. He didn't press further, but the look in his eyes told me he wasn't entirely convinced. That night, back at Sarah's, my nerves were frayed. He's getting suspicious, Sarah. I need to leave. Now. Sarah was quick to act. I'll drive you to the bus station first thing in the morning. You'll catch the first bus out of town. Lying in bed that night, I couldn't sleep. My mind replayed every moment of the past weeks. The deceit, the danger, the desperate bid for freedom. As dawn broke, I was ready. 
a small bag with my essentials, the evidence securely stashed, and a heart full of hope and fear. Ready? Sarah asked as we got into her car. I nodded, a lump in my throat. As I'll ever be. The drive to the bus station was silent, each of us lost in our thoughts. As we pulled up, Sarah turned to me, her eyes glistening. You're going to make it, Emma. I know it. I hugged her, my heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, Sarah, for everything. And with that, I stepped out of the car, my gaze fixed on the horizon. A new day was dawning, and with it, a new life for Emma. A life where fear and oppression had no place. A life I was ready to embrace, no matter what lay ahead. The morning sun was just rising as I made my way to confront Jack for the last time. The evidence was securely tucked in my bag, a heavy weight that carried the promise of justice and freedom. As I approached our once-shared home, my heart pounded with a mix of fear and determination. Jack was in the living room, his back to me as I entered. He turned, surprise etching his features. Emma, what are you doing here? I took a deep breath, steadying myself. I'm not here to stay, Jack. I'm here to end this. Confusion crossed his face. End what? The lies, the deceit, your illegal activities. I know everything, Jack. I pulled out the documents and photos, laying them on the table. He paled, his eyes darting over the evidence. Emma, I can explain. There's nothing to explain. I've seen enough. My voice was steady, a stark contrast to the storm of emotions inside me. Jack reached for me, desperation in his eyes. I'm sorry, Emma. I never meant for things to go this far. I can change. I stepped back, my resolve firm. It's too late for apologies, Jack. You chose this path, not me. I won't be part of your life of lies anymore. Tears brimmed in his eyes, but I felt nothing but the echo of the love I once had for him. Please, Emma, I need you. You needed me to dance for strangers, to cover your debts. You never needed me, Jack. You needed someone to use. My words were like a closing chapter, final and irrevocable. I left him there, amidst the shattered pieces of his deceit, and made my way to the police station. The officers were waiting, having been forewarned by Sarah. As I handed over the evidence, a sense of relief washed over me. This is everything. He can't hurt anyone else now. The officer in charge nodded solemnly. You did the right thing, ma'am. We'll take it from here. Leaving the station, the world seemed different, lighter. I walked with a freedom I hadn't felt in years. Jack was arrested later that day, the weight of his crimes finally catching up to him. In the days that followed, I started piecing together a new life. A small apartment in a different town, a job at a local bookstore, a quiet, peaceful existence. Sarah visited often, her presence a reminder of the strength of friendship and solidarity. You're doing great, Emma. I'm so proud of you. I smiled, looking around my new space, a place filled with hope and new beginnings. I never knew how strong I was until I had to be, Sarah. Thank you for helping me see that. She hugged me, a bond forged in adversity. You're an inspiration, Emma, truly. As I stood there in my new beginning, I realized I had not only escaped Jack's toxic influence, but had also rediscovered myself. I was no longer the woman who cowered under the weight of someone else's sins. I was Emma, strong, free, and the architect of my own destiny. And so, my story doesn't end with a sunset or a night in shining armor. It ends with a sunrise, a promise of a new day, and a woman standing tall, unbroken, and victorious. The story of Emma's journey to freedom and self-discovery has now reached its conclusion. What would you have done if you were in Emma's shoes? Would you have taken the same steps to escape, or would you have chosen a different path? Your thoughts and opinions are valuable to us. Please share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want to see more like it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our OSA, Our Stories Animated channel. Your support helps us bring more such empowering stories to life.